Introverts versus extroverts, exploring the behavioral differences. The idea of extroversion is not new. Notions of extroversion and introversion have been present in psychological literature for more than a century under various headings. A person's degree of extroversion or introversion is a major component of personality, according to many theories. Extroversion is a factor in determining a person's energy preferences, whether they are directed internally or outside. Knowing an individual's level of extroversion can also help us determine how they are likely to react and process external stimuli. There is no better level of extroversion or introversion. Both extremes have benefits and drawbacks, but by knowing where we fall on the spectrum, we can work on areas where we might be lacking. How extroverted we are can have a significant impact on our day-to-day -day lives in a variety of contexts. Knowing an individual's inclination to internalize or externalize actions can help us adjust our behavior accordingly in relationships and social bonds. Similarly, knowing an individual's introverted or extroverted personality can help practitioners in the positive psychology space tailor their approach to suit the subject. We thought you would enjoy downloading our three free positive psychology exercises before continuing. With the help of these research-based activities, you will learn about the core ideas of positive psychology, such as values, strengths, and self-compassion, and get the skills necessary to improve the health of your students, clients, and staff. How do we define an ambivert, extrovert, and introvert? Early in the 20th century, psychology began emerging as a separate academic science. Carl Jung put forth fundamental concepts in his investigation of personality during his period, such as the concepts of introversion and extroversion. According to Jung, the main factor separating personalities is where and how a person expresses their energy. He defined introversion as an inward turning of libido, and extroversion as an outward turning of libido. The introvert's focus is inward. If thoughts, emotions, and behaviors imply that the subject is the primary source of motivation. Conversely, extroverts focus their attention on their immediate surroundings. They act, feel, and think in terms of the objective rather than the subjective. In a crowded social gathering, an extrovert would probably enjoy and benefit from the interactions with others, while an introvert would probably feel drained and require some alone time to replenish their energy. Jung referred to libido as motivating for a variety of activities, not just sexual fulfillment. This is not to be mistaken with Freud's notion of the libido, in which libido was regarded as a source of psychological energy exclusive to sexual gratification. An extrovert is one who enters with interest and confidence into social activities of the direct type and has little liking for planning or detailed observation, according to Abernethy. On the other hand, introverts were described as above the average in liking for thought and below the general average in social inclination. In a sense, the extremes of the bell curve correspond to introversion and extroversion. What then separates the two? According to Jung, 1921, there is a large third group. It is challenging to pinpoint the source of this group's energy as it seems to come from both inside and outside, depending on where on the introvert-extrovert spectrum may fall. Pronounced introversion and pronounced extroversion are only extremes of conduct that are connected by continuous gradations, according to Heidbrenner. Stated differently, the evidence suggests a single mixed type rather than two distinct types. According to Conklin, who also proposed the existence of ambiverts, these people are the most normal, exhibiting flexibility between the two extremes. According to Roback, the less differentiated normal man, the source of whose motivation can scarcely be determined offhand as his introversion or extroversion is not sufficiently accentuated, constitutes the majority of those who fall into this category. The introvert-extrovert spectrum. What is it? There are things in life that are simple to classify. Discontinuous features include things like eye color, left or right-handedness, species within a genus, and time zones. Does human conduct actually fit neatly into one of two groups when it comes to the introvert-extrovert archetypal distinction? In actuality, the majority of us possess traits from both categories and lie in the middle. Instead of being a binary classification, extroversion is thought of as a spectrum, with people displaying a variety of behaviors connected to both. Like many continuous dimensions in psychology, the introvert-extrovert spectrum allows us to categorize things according to where they fall on the scale between two extremes. Here, it's an individual's natural inclination to react to stimuli in a particular way. With the bell curve of the normal distribution for continuous qualities in mind, we can create a spectrum that encompasses introverts, extroverts, and all the subtleties in between by placing absolute extroversion at one end of the scale and the absolute greatest propensity towards introverted behavior at the other. When thinking about continuous traits, it's crucial to keep in mind that the binary paradigm of introversion versus extroversion was created by humans in order to provide a straightforward framework for classifying people according to their behavioral qualities. What separates introverts from extroverts in terms of personality? 
Extroverts are regarded to be sociable, forceful, adaptive, joyful, and like to take risks, whereas introverts are thought to be contemplative, private, and thoughtful. These two personality types are assumed to be opposite ends of the introversion-extroversion spectrum. The personality traits of extroversion and introversion are intricate, multifaceted concepts. People can lie in the middle of the two dimensions and display characteristics of both, or they can fall at either extreme of the two dimensions. Let's examine some introvert versus extrovert personality differences with regard to these domains. Social graces. Extrovert and introvert types behave quite differently in social settings. In contrast to introverts who typically prefer to avoid social situations altogether, extroverts exhibit a propensity for seeking out, participating in and enjoying social interactions. Social dependency and social withdrawal are the two extremes of sociability that Guilford and Guilford 1936 postulated. Extroverts are more socially conscious, feeding off the energy of those around them and frequently finding themselves at the center of attention in large social gatherings, whereas introverts are more reserved and prefer to spend their time alone. To be clear, introverts do not necessarily dislike social situations. Rather, they prefer to enjoy themselves without the excessive stimulation that comes with them. Interaction According to Minley and Nass, 2003, extroverts have a strong social presence because they tend to talk more frequently and loudly than introverts do, occupy more physical space with wider gestures, and start more discussions. Extroverts made more eye contact and spoke more often than introverts during talks with strangers, according to a small study of undergraduates. Furthermore, extroverts are substantially more certain and precise than introverts in deciphering nonverbal cues. This nonverbal decoding known as the extrovert advantage was linked to extroverts' increased need for sensory stimulation and their social experience. Making decisions. When faced with time constraints, introverts are more prone than extroverts to rely on preliminary information when forming opinions and making decisions. Extroverts are said to make more rash decisions based on what feels most natural to them at that particular moment, according to research on the influence of extroversion and introversion on decision-making. Extroverts were seen to demonstrate quality-checking behavior prior to making decisions, but when presented with significant choices, they also required guidance from someone. On the other hand, introverts rely mostly on themselves, intuition, and careful thought to avoid making snap decisions. In the workplace, extroverts are typically more optimistic about life in general, and this also applies to their employment. Studies have indicated a positive correlation between extroversion and job happiness. Furthermore, compared to their introverted counterparts, extroverts are more inclined to intervene to improve poor employment settings. Introverts are more affected by noise distractions at work than are extroverts. According to Belozhevik, Slepsevik, and Jakovljevic, 2001, introverts had significant difficulty focusing when noise distraction was introduced, but extroverts actively chose higher noise intensities. These findings corroborated the theory that introverts react more strongly to noise, which raises their arousal and hinders their ability to complete complicated tasks. Does the brain differ from one another? The majority of the early work on extroversion and introversion was anecdotal and self-reported. But, as neuroimaging technology have advanced, we have gained access to a wealth of quantifiable, scientifically validated data, suggesting that introverts and extroverts actually have quite distinct brains. So this is the end of our today's video, do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.